Hey friends, it's Miss Jenna. We're going to be doing an art activity and a reading based on the summer reading program theme of Imagine Your Story. Today, it's all about monsters. One Hungry Monster, a counting book in rhyme, written by Susan Habor O'Keefe and illustrated by Lynn Messenger. One hungry monster underneath my bed, moaning and groaning and begging to be fed. Two hungry monsters at my closet door, chewing up my sneakers, asking me for more. One, two, three hungry monsters in the upstairs hall, lick the flower painting hanging on the wall. One, two, three, four hungry monsters round my daddy's head, sniffing out the crackers he'd eaten in his bed. Five hungry monsters sliding down the rail, munching and crunching on one another's tail. Six hungry monsters underneath the rug, tracking down some footprints to catch a tasty bug. What comes after six? Seven hungry monsters round our TV screen, drooling at commercials for sauerkraut and beans. Eight hungry monsters on the chandeliers swear they haven't eaten for maybe 20 years. Nine hungry monsters wearing roller skates, hunting through the kitchen for knives and forks and plates. 10 hungry monsters about to fuss and kick. Won't get out, they tell me, unless I feed them quick. That's pretty rude. So I bring out one jug of apple juice, two loaves of bread, three bowls of spaghetti that they dump upon my head, four purple eggplants, five pickled pears, six orange pumpkins, they climb up and down like stairs, seven roasted turkeys, eight pizza pies, nine watermelons that they wish were twice the size, 10 jars of peanut butter, but not a speck of jam, because I want every monster mouth shut tighter than a clam. They gargle with some apple juice, then shower with the rest. They pinch the bread to breadcrumbs and won't clean up their mess. They braid spaghetti into wigs and eat the eggplants whole and learn that pickled pears won't bounce and neither will they roll. They wear the pumpkin tops as hats and dream of pumpkin pie. They argue over wishbones and pick the turkeys dry. They toss the pizzas back and forth like frisbees through the air, then spit out sticky melon seeds to land right in my hair. Oh, how would you feel if you were this poor boy right now? They paint the peanut butter like lipstick on their mouths, then stamp their feet and boldly say, what else is in this house? Oh, how do you think he's feeling right now? My goodness. Get out, get out, I loudly shout. You've made a mess and then no less. You ate my food and were quite rude. You put me in a nasty mood. You are so bad, it makes me mad. It makes me want to squirm and twist to make a face and shake my fist to stamp the floor and kick the door and then to do it all once more. And so without a single doubt, I tell you now, get out, get out. And sorry monsters, creeping one by one, climb into the chimney, and now my job is done. Then from behind the toaster, my secret hiding spot. I take an apple muffin the monsters never got.
In this project, we're going to make our own monster. So instead of 10 monsters, we might have a monster with multiple parts, or it can even be multiple monsters, because we're going to use the entire paper in a, probably a different way than you've done before. So first we're going to do something called a magic print, and we're going to use magic markers in, it in a different way. So first I am going to use aluminum foil. So instead of having paper be the surface we're drawing on, we're going to use the aluminum foil. And I have my markers, and the one thing with this, with this project is you want to have at least three colors, because we really want this to have a big impact and to kind of cover the entire page. So it doesn't matter about really where you put the marks. I'm just going to kind of spread them out. I used purple and I used green. And with this type of transfer, it is not going to transfer shapes very well. So you don't want to spend a really long time making this drawing look like something. Our main objective is just to transfer the color in a really interesting way with lots of texture. So I have my three colors. If this is something that's really fun and you wanna keep coloring, go for it. Our next component is water. So we want to have water H2O in our spray bottle and we want it to be in spray. You don't want it to be in a stream. And you might want to have your grown up help you with this part because we want it to be up um, about a foot from the top of the paper. And we just went to, or the aluminum foil, and you want to spray just so that you start to see the colors moving. But you don't want there to be a huge puddle. You just want to moisten the marker on top of our aluminum foil. Now I have my, I think this is nine by 12, but you can use a standard size piece of paper. And I'm using a watercolor paper that's nice and thick and strong. You can also use a heavy cardstock. I'm going to place my paper right on top. I'm going to use one of my hands to keep it steady, and I'm going to massage the back of my paper with my hand. So you don't want to do a Swedish massage. That's not going to help. And tapping your fingers, that doesn't really help that much either. You want to use your nice full hand and move it all along your aluminum foil. And then you're going to um, choose one corner and tear it away from your paper, your aluminum foil from your paper, and now you have your print. So this is exactly what I was hoping for. There's lots of color, it's kind of tie-dyed, and then there's this kind of like splattering of color throughout. So that's a really great surface for us to start with. To create the meat of the body of our monsters, we're going to use one part shaving cream and one part spool glue, so Elmer's or any other kind of glue that turns clear. So to start with our shaving cream, we need to shake it up really, really well. And the one thing about shaving cream is you need to make sure that it's the foam cream and not the gel cream. The gel will not work for this project. So after it's nice and shook up, I'm going to take off my lid, cap, and I'm going to spray it into a container. So I just have these old yogurt containers and I'm going to separate by color. So I'm going to do two containers because I want two different colors. And I have it filled about all the way up to the top. But the thing about shaving cream, and it has this really beautiful texture and feeling and movement, but I need to make it stay. So I need to add my glue. So the glue will ensure that your shaving cream always holds its shape. So we're actually creating our own homemade poppy paint. And I'm going to pour my glue on top. And I'm going to stop whenever it just starts to kind of cave in. I have a plastic spoon and I'm going to start to mix it. So you want to really scoop the bottom, just like you if you were baking at home. You really need to scoop the bottom to make sure that the mixture is really combined. So I can tell right away that this mixture is a little fluffier than this mixture. So that means that I put a little bit too much glue in that one. So I'm just going to come over 
and add a little bit more shaving cream. Now this does not have to be an exact science. I'm not going to measure this. I'm just kind of going based on feel. So whenever I pick up my new puffy paint and I have my spoon totally vertical, it's not sliding off. So that's telling me that that is a perfect consistency. So you can have a white monster if you want, or you can add color. So I have liquid watercolor that I can use, or I have um, food dye that I can use. So I think I'm going to go for the food dye. Pink one. I'm going to have a couple, a few drops over here of the blue. And how about some pink? So I have my blue and my pink. So there's another opportunity to mix it up. And I'm going to mix it until it's all consistently one color. So I have my blue on that side. You can trade spoons if you don't want to kind of mix your colors too much. But I added a little bit of blue to my pink, so it's going to turn a little bit more purple. And that's fine. So now I'm going to start to drop my puffy paint right onto my magic print. So I can really start to shape the body of my monster. I can make some of the spots on my monster taller and some of them thinner. But you can see I wouldn't say that this is exactly painting because I don't have my paintbrush because I want it to still hold its shape. So I'm smoothing it out but I'm not crushing it down. Some of our youngest learners might really like to use their hands for this part, and that's totally fine. As long as you're outside or somewhere where you can easily get to a sink and clean off. Because the shaving cream cleans off really, really easily, but sometimes the food dye can be so potent that you're going to end up with multicolored hands. So what I decided with my monster is instead of this kind of cute furry monster that's in the story, I want mine to be kind of globby, kind of like a blob. And I can see I'm, I kind of accidentally created this almost like cotton candy effect in my blue where, where the pink and the blue meet. It's almost like marbling. I really like that. So maybe I'll try to create that on purpose. So maybe I'll put a little blue on top of my pink and grab the other side of my spoon and just kind of Whirl it around. So right now I'm imagining that my monster maybe has multiple heads. Maybe it doesn't even have a body. Now, what will really start to give my monster some personality is by giving it some eyes. So an art material that I just love are googly eyes. I have googly eyes of all different um, sizes. There's some that have different colored irises. I think I'm going to just start plopping these in here. What's really great about this material is because about half of it is glue, I don't need to add any other glue. If I push all of these items into my puffy paint, then it's going to stick. So my guy just has so many eyes. Maybe it's kind of a community of monsters. Maybe each of these heads have its own personality. I think that might be kind of tricky for everyone to get along. Now, I think that my monster is also a little bit rude, a little bit cheeky, like the monsters from our story, because I think that's kind of fun. Maybe it comes through your chimney whenever it smells toast or something like that. But it's really fun whenever you're creating is to just start to come up with your own story of your monster. Now, if your parents are comfortable with this, you can have some sparkles, you can have some glitter. My monster is incredibly glamorous. So she really wants to have some sparkle. She's really proud of all of her embellishments. So I have these kind of sequins that I'm going to stick in and place on top. Maybe I have a little bit more glitter. Another reason why I really like to have 
the tray underneath where I'm working so I can kind of capture any of these things that, that don't stick properly. I also have some yarn. So maybe this monster has kind of some glamorous hair, or maybe these are tentacles. I'm just gonna kind of find some spots to, to push some of this down. Now if I really wanted to, I could get some glue and make sure that it's, it's kind of stuck exactly where I want it to be when it's not on the puppy paint. Maybe I'll make this eyeball have kind of like a scarf around it. So now I have my own monster that I've created. It kind of reminds me of an alien, something that's kind of flying down. I like how this one almost looks like it has a nose and sort of like an antenna coming up from it. And it's really hard to believe now because it's still wet, but this will keep its shape. And so I have an example here of one that my son made last Halloween. So it's a little bit more shriveled up than the one that's, that's fresh and brand new. But if you touch it, you see that it still has that puffiness. So it's something that's really fun to play around with. I had a lot of fun doing this today, but I'm even more excited to know what you'll come up with on your own.